Hello. I'm doing a video on the steps that I, t I had taken um, to uh, get my CNA license. And uh, Victorious Joy um, wanted me to uh, request a video that I do a video on my journey um, in doing that. So hopefully this is helpful to her and for anyone else who's interested in being a CNA. Um, the school that I went to, went to was called MedStar Academy here in Peoria, Arizona. And um, to uh, go to uh, to take the classes for CNA it was about about three months uh, course um, in which you would um, you know it's just like any other fast quick paced course uh, where you are tested um, on a regular basis constantly every other day every two days so it's the, the same thing as other quick courses and during that uh, span. Um, you are um, basically um, reading the materials, you're taking tests of what uh, the knowledge you know, and you're also doing hands-on skills with other uh, cl classmates. So I did that for about three months. Um, in order to do that also, before you even, externship is part at the end of it. And in order to do that, before you uh, go on your externships and that's when you um, extend your training, your hands-on training, so to speak, um, which I did mine in a nursing home, um, because you have to accumulate so many hours for skills as well as written to even qualify to even take the, the uh, CNA uh, exam. And that varies state by state, so you would have to research that um, information. Um, so basically, during the course of my classes, I did have to, have to get a fingerprint card, and I also had to get a background check, and you also have to be up on all of your shots. That's with any, I guess, medical when you're dealing with patients. Um, pretty much, I had to, um, uh, I can't think of the name of the shot that I had to take, but um, basically current on your shots and it probably come to me later but um, by the end of my course after taking uh, passing all the the written tests and um, being um, working on my skills um, with other classmates and also being taught by uh, the teacher um, at the end of the class once you've passed all of that then you go on your externship and like I said I, my externship was at a nursing home um, so, and my experience there working at a nursing home, um, basically, um, you would be paired off in groups and, uh, you would work with an individual CNA at that workplace. And, um, depending on how comfortable that CNA is with you is when you, when, um, the, you know, how much they will let you, uh, you know, be involved from a CNO, uh, with the patient right on. I know my experience, our group, uh, like the first patient, um, I just dove right in. And, and I guess that's part of you being, uh, of your your personality as well, if you feel comfortable also in, in doing that. And um, we work with a, a great group of people, and we learned a lot um, doing that process. Um, that took, that was about like two to three weeks. And then after that, um, what you do is you, you go in and you really just really, really try to get ready for the state exam um, to get certified. And that is do, done by qualified state um, uh, personnel um, that, quali that uh, basically gives the test for CNA uh, participants. So basically you would just go in on your off time. If you have anything that you need to work on, you would... Uh, you know, get you know, get together with your teacher so that you can go over all your skills. Because doing this uh, test that you take for CNA, you do have to take a written test, and you often have also have to take a skills test. And we had to learn 21 skills. And out of those 21 skills on the state test, I think you had to do like three or four. You had to perform three or four of them. I can't remember, um, but uh, it was something similar to, to you know to that. So that's what you're doing. You're trying to really get yourself, you know, prepared for that. Um, during the classroom, you're doing that. 
and also at home if you know practice at home uh, family members they're good for working you know as patients um, you're working on your blood pressure um, you're working on temperatures um, you're working on respiration um, and you're working on the, the skills you know um, basically um, like I said we had to learn 21 of them and some of them include uh, basically uh, um, you know wheelchair patients um, you know how to remove them uh, from the bed onto a wheelchair um, some of them would include feeding grooming patients uh, that's just some of the few things that you would have to you know to learn and um, so um, when the state tests uh, come along uh, it would just be you would be, well we were in a group of uh, group a group in a room and we took our written tests and then after that you will be called one by one and you would have to perform these skills in front of, in front of a state certified person who do, who who is certified to do you know to, to look and to test you on your CNA skills and when you do your skills you are timed so you have to be done with each skill uh, by a certain amount of time um, you do if you have time at the end of each skill basically they will ask you are you sure are you done or however which way that they will ask you to let you know that um, basically if you if you make a mistake to correct it right then and there and if you have time to do that um, I would suggest doing that but um, if you can go through the skill thoroughly without making a mistake of course that's better um, I made quite a few mistakes and um, I went back and I still had time left um, when I was done I caught my own mistakes so um, sometimes you know it doesn't go so perfect but don't you know don't get nervous um, try to you know think your way out of it try to correct your own mistakes um, if you know what those mistakes are so after that um, basically you're sitting and you're waiting it takes about it took me about two months um, for them to verify everything and um, there's a, we a website uh, nursing board website that you go on to um, to see if you basically uh, your certification has taken place um, in the meantime you get a letter in the mail too uh, telling you whether or not you pass the test and then you're certified so um, that was uh, the steps that I have taken uh, what I have done outside of that um, even when I was in school I was already volunteering you know at a hospice I've been a volunteer since last March so it's been a year almost um, no so I've been volunteering since since February it's, it's been about a year since I've been a volunteer at hospice and I've been at the same location for that amount of time so I've gotten to know the doctors I've gotten to know the, the nurses I've gotten to know other CNAs um, where they are comfortable with uh, working with me and allowing me to go in a room and help them with patients um, I'm not currently working um, at this uh, particular time um, because of personal reasons more so right now when I got out of school is because couldn't find work but right now it's more personal reasons and that's because my son he does competition track and my husband is a truck driver so between the two um, I'm moving and he's not available because sometimes he has to go out of town so in the meantime to keep my skills up um, I do this at the at hospice um, and I am very grateful for them letting me uh, you know to let me come into the room and for them being let me you know be comfortable enough to teach me as well as um, let me interact with the patients on the CNA um, side of things so hopefully this helps um, and um, if anybody else have anything to add for Victor the victorious joy or anybody else who's interested in becoming a CNA like any other kind of medical medical uh, profession that you go into um, it has to be you know something that, that you love you're passionate about and um, good luck to you uh, victorious joy and um, do your research and um, let me know um, if you're going to go ahead and pursue CNA or any other uh, medical uh, medical field okay thank you bye